Hey folks, welcome to the stream. I'm Commander Red Falcon, and we are one jump away from Beagle Point. Bring up the old map here. There we go. Make sure everything looks good on the stream and we'll jump. Okay, everything looks good. After several weeks of traveling out here we're about to jump into one of the more sought after regions of space well for explorers anyway it's kind of a rite of passage engage This is it. Oh my god, carriers suck. Yeah. There's players around here. It's one of the fleet carriers. Alright. Black Hole Generator, Serenity Valley, Memorial. Let's go take a look at that memorial. There should be... Where's the Endeavor? Well, let's go to Beagle Point first. Let's go grab that. history about this place. I think I've already talked about Beagle Point before. It being one of the original uh, furthest points that players have traveled. Uh, this was before engineering. Huh, definitely before fleet carriers. And uh, um, neutron boosting. How much you want to bet there are uh, uh, luxury liners out here? Hey, there they are. Let's see what kind of context do we have here? Beluga liner, Orca, Hauler. All right, B goal point. Hey, there's my promotion to elite. B goal point. Distant Worlds 2 was an ambitious five-month expedition to the far outer rim. It launched from the something system in January 3305 and reached its final destination of Beagle Point in May 3305. The purpose of the expedition was to unravel the mysteries of the galaxy and to construct a starport at Sagittarius A, which they did. This beacon marks the final destination Distant Worlds Rendezvous Point, which was visited by 3,747 commanders during the expedition. Wow. That's a lot of players. And I checked, and the POI roster is at like 5,000 something, so, you know. Not breaking any new ground here, but it's still a, a feat. Like I said, it's a rite of passage for explorers, so. There's another one. Memorial. Two 
Xi Xylo Xylophone. I'm guessing he was a player? Or she was a that person was a player. There we go. Let's take a look at this memorial. I did not know there was a memorial beacon here. DSSA Distant Worlds. I thought it was called Endeavor. going. Okay, I guess we're going to dock at DSSA Distant Worlds. I thought it was supposed to be called DSSA Endeavor, but oh well. That's fine. Wow, there's the Milky Way. Is this going to be on the other side? So I'm curious why these beacons have a, um, like a briefcase icon on them. I never understood that. It would make sense for him to have like a exclamation point, but yeah, what do I know, right? Zai the Beagle was the epitome of the phrase man's, man's best friend, endlessly loyal and loving. Zai made sure his commander was cuddled relentlessly after returning from a long journey, whether it was to another system, Nebula, Black Hole, or just the local shop. Oh, that's cute. It, it's a memorial to the uh, guy's dog. He spent his days dashing around, making friends with anyone who came near him, and accommodating commander Crispy Toast on his official ex Exploring buddy on his adventures through space, often wrapped in a blanket. To all commanders who find this beacon, damn it. Uh, thank you. To all commanders who find this beacon, raise your hand and salute the Zai. May he run wild. Damn it. May he run wild and free. Oh, that's adorable. Memorial to his dog. Um, I'm sure he was the guy that found this system originally. Alright, let's go ahead. Dock at this. Dock at this carrier, upload some data. Well, it wasn't full bred people, but he was pretty damn close. Okay. So this is actually Endeavor. I don't know why they called it Distant Worlds. I recognize the uh, color scheme. permission to land. Speed limit? What's that? I'm digging the color scheme. That's pretty cool. Green.
hangar. Let's restock. Refuel. Wow, this one's got a shipyard. It's a brand new dream All right, let's see here. Let's make a couple repairs here. Oops, I didn't want to go here. Thanks, maintenance. Yeah, there's a tariff. Ship integrity, let's go ahead and fix that up. We're just going to leave the paint job the way it is. Everything looks good. All right, let's take a look at whatever what we've got for sale here. Actually, let me check the stream real quick. Okay, wow. Okay, so something I was very surprised. Um. So after I left Tartarus, I found a lot of new systems. Now, I don't know if that's because most commanders don't go that route, but I found a lot of... Wow, that one's got a lot of money. I found a lot of uh, new systems, more than I was expecting. So that was very surprising. I also found some... I'm going to guess they were pre... Um, pre-patch, uh, pre-exploration patch ones, because only uh, star systems were found. Not a bad little bit of money, though. I think that's like, what, 30, 40, almost 50,000 right there. All right, I've earned the following acolytes. First, discover, yeah, see all these systems? This is a big one. And I'm sure there's probably going to be a few, like, first discovered and mapped. Because there were a few planets that hadn't been discovered yet. Congratulations. Are you following acolytes? First to discover. Yep. Now it's possible someone had already scanned them and got here before me. I mean, it's whatever. First to discover. Cool. All right, so we got some. Hamzel, I've seen that name before. Ah, four percent tariff, not too bad. All right, so, yeah, this is Beagle Point. <laughs> um, actually, let's go topside real quick. Just going to give you a visual of just how far away we are. <laughs> this might take a while. 65,279.35 light years. Yep. Let's see. Huh. I guess we can't see it from here. And I'll come back and take some pictures. Uh, we're going to be coming back here at some point. Oh, it's behind us. Okay. That makes sense. There it is. 
you want proof, that's that's where we are. Oh, mass locked? Yeah, that makes sense. Let's just get away from this carrier here. Now, I might have mentioned this before. This is not our final destination. Uh, there's actually a point further away that we can reach with this ship. So we're gonna be going there. I actually built this ship specifically for this task, so. Let me check a couple things real quick, make sure we're not missing anything. Actually, let's check here. Okay, so we got 35 injections available, 35, 12. Okay, cool. So we've got plenty of raw materials to th synthesize our uh, FSD boost uh, injectors, so we're good there. All right, let's, let's scan the system real quick. Just because that might be kind of fun. Not that we're gonna get like, um, any, I mean, make a little bit of money, but mostly just say that we've done it. <laughs> so let's clear this planet here. Give this a shot. All right. Okay, what do we got here? I see body. First discovered by Camsel. It's also the guy that owns the ship. Nolan Blake. And Miss Rarity. Mapped it. This is a uh, this is Beagle Point. It's not very. Uh, <laughs> There's Serenity Valley. It's not very. Um, what's the word? Interesting. The only thing that's interesting about it is how it's history. Oh my God, carriers suck and black hole generator. Yeah, it doesn't even... Oh! That has something interesting on it. It's got a human location on it. Hmm. Actually, this one's got human signals. It's got two human signals on it. And Camsel. Let's map it and see what's here. Damn it. Alright, put a dollar in a swear jar. I'm about to do a loop of shame. Okay, here we go. Curious to see what those human signals are. I'm sure one of them is the the beacon. Outer ring. 
bench still, huh? But it's so cool that uh, a player was able to make this kind of a mark on the game. Surface scanned by 50%. Surface scan okay, so there are two human signals on this planet. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Those human signals. It's the memorial. The, um, the carrier. And then this other one must be the memorial, I'm not the memorial carrier. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's what those two human signals are. Because it would have shown up. Damn it. Map. Yeah, there's nothing on here. Okay. Alright. So, let's head to the furthest point that you can reach in a, um, well, moderately engineered ship. So I will be right back. That can't be right. Five hundred and twenty six light years? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. Oh, damn. All right. I'll show you where we're headed. I have a bookmark for it. Oh well. All right. Check something. Yep, that looks right. My next waypoint.
Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't need that waypoint yet. <laughs> uh, what the hell am I doing? There we go. Let's get out of here. I don't know what I was thinking. How many jumps do I have? 12? Yeah, we can make this 12 jumps, I think. Yeah, to reach this point, you have to um, follow a specific route to get there. And considering that's what the ship was built for, might as well go. Well, I mean, we came all this far, right? <laughs> yeah, that was Beagle Point. Pretty cool. I'm sure every one of these has been mapped thoroughly, so scanned and mapped, so I am more focused on speed at this point. Plus, we'll be coming back this way anyway, so plenty of time to scan planets and everything on the way back. So a couple of these jumps, I'm going to have to use my FSD injector but we've got plenty of materials on board, so we're not gonna get stranded anywhere. And I think there might be a fleet carrier. I mean, you can't buy materials from fleet carriers, but still, you can't buy materials anywhere. What's my balance, anyway? Ooh, look at that. I broke 400 million. Nice. Clear the heat radius of the star. Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, I'm not like elite dangerous rich, but I'm doing all right for myself. I could easily afford an anaconda now, I think. Now, fully up, fully kidding it out, I don't know. I'll have to look at that. I actually haven't priced an anaconda yet, to be honest. It's probably going to be my, exp my new exploration ship, if we're being honest. I'd like to get an anaconda to get... Um, you can fairly easily get them up to about 80... Um, 80 light year jump range. And I think that's like 20 more than what we have now. What is my jump range anyway? 63. But I'm not sure how I feel about the bridge of the Anaconda just yet. I mean, I haven't sat in it yet, but it doesn't have this open glass cockpit. Which, you know, has its pros and cons, but... Oh, wow, look at that. We're really far away now. And just look out at this. There's no stars. I've commented on that before, that this region of space is called the Abyss. And, uh, yeah. You can see why. It is dark. All right, we cleared the influence. Yeah, we cleared. Drive charging. What are we up to now? Eight more jumps? Wow, okay. Felt like I would have done more.
clear? Now I'm all paranoid about the sound not working. What the hell? Oh shit, there we go. Alright, we're good. Yeah, I'm all paranoid because um, about the game sound not working. <laughs> like, uh, I think it was a couple streams ago. The game audio, I I updated my video drivers and just did not bother to check all my sounds. Because all the sounds coming out of the uh, video card. Which I know, it's, it's very weird. I remember when sound cards were like actual cards that you put in your computer. They weren't integrated into motherboards or... Um, Video cards. I mean, HDMI wasn't even a thing back then. Where are we at five. That's the space madness talking. You get out here in the abyss and you just see how small the galaxy is. And it just messes with your head a little bit. Oh yeah, galaxy's getting further and further away. Look at that. Frame shift drive charging. any neutron stars out this way either. There are the very few. Those of you who don't know that trick, um, if the star is red on your radar, that means that you're still in the star's heat radius, I guess, is a good way to describe it. So if you go into, um, if you engage your jump drive, there's a chance that you'll overheat. Uh, but as soon as it turns yellow, you're clear. So that's what I've been looking at, if anyone's wondering. Or didn't know that trick yet. Talked about it on the stream before, but not. some people are new, might not know that trick yet, so. Two more jumps. And then we've got six more waypoints after this, something like that.
Good to see those wings on my arms. Good stuff. VR is amazing. Just the fact that I'm able to just like look out and like, oh, there it is. Okay, I'm having some technical problems. So, I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Um, the game just crashed. I've not had that happen to me on stream. Well, I think it might have happened once. Very rare. All right. Okay, so we don't have a route planned yet. Here we go. Next point. Thing looks good. Didn't take any damage or anything. All right. All right. Little bump in the road, but we're back on track. Let me double check. Stream looked good. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, wow, that's freaky. So, uh, <laughs> to give you an idea of just how dark the sky is, I was rolling with my joystick, and the ship was rolling, but I didn't have a point of reference to see the roll, so I thought my roll wasn't working on my joystick, but... No. Nope. Just, ugh. Darkness of space and all that. Messes with you. again. <laughs> uh. I don't know why I'm plotting a route. It's right there. Now we're 
We're getting into the flow of things. Okay, 66. This one we're going to have to use an FSD injector. Though, if I was smart, I wouldn't have refueled. I probably could have made that jump. But, don't worry about it too much. Synthesis complete. 78.8. Seventy-eight point eight. I don't know. Actually, I think my ship's... Yeah, my ship's max unladen is like 66, so... I don't know if I would have made it anyway. But I've got enough material for like 30-something of those, so I'm not worried about it. Like I said before, I'm not going to get stranded out here. I don't know if I can help it anyway. Oh, that's a good question. Do you restop? Do you respawn on carriers? That's a very good question. And I wonder if you can exploit that mechanic. Say you get someone in a carrier to jump to a point that's you know, outside of a ship's normal jump range, and then you die within range of it, and, you know, so that it's the closest one. Hmm. Interesting exploit mechanic. I think this is going to be one that's like 80 something. Oh no! Weird. Okay. Maybe it's the one after that. Here we go. I think it's the one after this that's like 84. Ish.
I believe this is the big one. Yep. Yeah, that's the one that's 82. That's fine. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get a route. Alright, so let's line up. So we already know uh, basic injection will get us to 76. So we're going to want to get a standard injection. brings our ship up to 94 and we could actually jump a hundred unladen assuming like our tank is like nearly empty which I don't advise okay Frame shift drive charging. and just to verify we got like yeah 33 yeah we got like 33 of those we're good we're not we're not in danger I stocked up. I think we got like two more jumps before we get there. Is there a carrier here? Dark Exocide. Cool, I guess. Docking access, none. A decommissioned fleet carrier. This carrier no longer provides docking access. Huh. Well, that's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, didn't know they had any of these. star. Fuel oh, yep. I think this is it. Fuel complete. Gotham City, Black Pearl, Zodiac. Let me check a couple things, but I think we're here. Oh yeah. We're here. So, I'm going to assume there's nothing too interesting about this system other than it's far away. I'm 
Miss Rarity. Like a pony? could get first discovered um, acolytes for asteroids. I thought that wasn't a thing. Maybe I missed something. I mean, I always scan them regardless, but still. A water world. Cool. Well, there's at least something interesting here. Next, we gotta find a good planet to land on and take some pictures. ahead of the ship. It's just nothing. Absolutely. A couple nebula right there. I think that's the skull nebula that we've been chasing this whole time. I'm guessing it's out of our galaxy, but just look at this. There's just nothing here. It's unnerving. <laughs> uh have anything interesting. Uh, some geological stuff on that one. Geological stuff. Might be worth landing and checking out. There's the water world. Can't land on that one. Let's see if any of these planets have any interesting features. Two human signals, those are going to be the two carriers right there. Huh. Let's take a look at... Yeah, these a lot further away. Alright, well... Let's bring this map back up real quick. I'll go to this planet over here. It's far away from everything, and I might get some really good shots. Because I kind of want to get away from the influence of the star. Let's take a nice dark photo. All right. We 
are going to be doing this for a while. Looks like. Yeah, we've got plenty of fuel. We're not... Actually, is that a scoopable star up there? Scoopable, good, okay. So, we need to get some more gas, we can go there. Uh, but yeah, this is the furthest point you can travel by ship so far. Obviously carriers, they've got a jump range of like 5,000 light years, so they could, they could hit some of these um, further out stars, but if it's just you and a moderately engineered asp explorer you can come out here uh you just need to be able to make it past that like 80 something light year jump if you can get your ship to like 90 light years laden um, with fsd injector you, you can come out here just make sure you have enough to get you back or um I haven't looked to see if uh, any of these planets have the minerals I would need, but eh, it's not important. Well, let's see how far away we are from... How far are we from home? Sixty-five thousand six hundred and forty-seven point three four light years. I'd say I'm in the sixty-five thousand club. Wow, I'm so far away from the bubble. This is unreal. You know what I should have done? Eh, I'll do that later. Oh, actually, F was the one I wanted. There we go. Target locked in. Okay. Need to check the chat, make sure I wasn't missing anything. What the hell? Is that a graphical glitch? I'm seeing orbital. Oh, okay, okay, no, no, no. Those are just the orbital lines for the, uh, the second star. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. Weird. gonna go out on a limb and assume okay. Okay. I must be flying away from the galaxy okay I must be flying away from the Milky Way yeah I think the Milky Way is that way I don't know why I'm pointing you can't see my hand but it's that way it's behind me but yeah we made it 
65,000 light years from Earth. Here we are, the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. Now, some of you might be thinking, this is gonna be the end of the stream. No. No, because we have to get back. <laughs> we have to fly back to Earth and um, that's going to be the next chapter of the stream. This was the expedition to Beagle Point. Next, we're going to be doing the expedition from Beagle Point. Kind of a lame title, but it's descriptive. So, wow. Really accomplished a lot on this expedition. Um, I visited all the stops along the way to Colonia. Stopped at Colonia, obviously. Um, we visited above and below the galactic plane. We visited the middle of the galaxy, Sagittarius A. We've seen black holes. We've seen the second largest black hole and the largest black hole. We've um, we've been to Luna's shadow. We've been to the historic rendezvous point. It's been a lot the past few weeks. Well, it's almost sad that we're going to have to start heading back. But we've almost come out to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish, which, well, for me, was getting some cool screenshots. And, uh, no bragging rights. Here we are. Now, there's a couple other points um, out this way that I want to explore as well, but I don't know if we're going to have time to do it on stream. Um, after this, I'm going to be heading back to Beagle Point, and there's a couple points out that I want to visit. Hope I can get to them. We'll see. I haven't actually researched. Uh, this was the only point that I wanted to absolutely make sure and I've been planning this this particular part of the expedition for feels like months now I specifically built this ship to um, fly out here so feels good to see everything come together and it's not like this was a particularly Strenuous expedition. It was just one of those things that you had to stick with. So it's good. Good follow through. But damn, I'm gonna. I can't wait till I can see some stars again. This is really freaky. going to intentionally overshoot the planet a bit and then come around from the other side because I want to land on the side of the planet that's facing um, the galaxy get some cool pictures I'm not going to put a dollar in the square jar for this. This is actually intentional. There we go. That's 
that's what I wanted to see. Oh, wow, look at that. That looks really cool. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Amen. Okay, I guess I'll put a, putting a dollar in the swear jar anyway. What am I up to, like 12 bucks now? Let you know. Turn those orbital lines off. Okay, first things first. Let's get a screenshot showing just how far away we are from Earth. Okay. There we go. There's my proof for the forums. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and land on this planet here. Get a pretty cool screenshot or two or three. I should probably map this planet now that I'm thinking about it. Are you a twofer? I'm gonna do is come around. Any interesting features? Nope. So, what I can do if I approach this way. Flip this thing into 
might be able to play this right and just come around the dark side. Switch, there we go. Watch me see the planet. Got, I mean, Splat's got some interesting features, though. Okay. Okay, so it might actually be in my best interest to come around from the land in the dark side. Pretty cool looking planet, though. over the horizon, I think we can make a good landing spot. Wide failed too shallow. There might be a good spot. I don't have to look up too high. Looks kind of rocky over there. Point zero four G. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good here. an idea. I think I can make it work if I land here. Wow, look how deep that canyon is. That 
to admit, this little planet has some really cool features. I think this will work nicely. Uh, suitable place to land. There we go. Touchdown. Let's go ahead and then take you offline. Right, let's take some pretty pictures, shall we? That looks pretty good. Let's try this. Yeah, that don't look good. All right, let's take Red out.
try a different approach. Oh, that's the ax absolute maximum that I can be, huh? Oh crap, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, if only I could get out and walk around. That's the only way that would make this better, but I guess I'll have to settle for a uh, uh, view like this. Feels good. Well, I hate to disappoint everyone, but I'm going to cut the stream short a little bit today. Um, there's some pictures I need to take that I can't do with the um, headset. Uh, there's just a lot more settings I have access to. Um, so. I'm going to be doing that, but I do want to thank all of you for watching, and especially those who have been with me since the beginning. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It's It's been a journey. It has been quite a journey to get here. So, But like I said, journey's half over. We need to still need to get home. So, um, Streams are every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, typically run about two hours. Um, Except for this one. Usually they go about two, two hours and 20 minutes. So I figured I've earned a, a little little bit of a break, I think. Cut off a little earlier. Uh, let's see. Uh, follow me on Twitter at RedFalcon2K6 for updates about the stream. Uh, sometimes I do bonus streams on Saturdays. Uh, I think it's every, like, fourth or third Saturday. I can't remember now. And, of course, all these streams are archived on my YouTube channel. Just search for Red Falcon Beagle Point Expedition. You should be able to find me pretty quickly. You can go give me a sub there. Uh, the videos are usually posted the day after the stream. So if you want to catch up, you're welcome to before we start our journey back. 
Let me see. I think that's it. I think that's my whole pitch. Um, thank all of you again for watching, and be safe out there.